Hello everyone, Nick Stanford here to talk more about the Marlowe TypeScript SDK. Hopefully you've seen prior demo videos as this video will continue to build on top of that knowledge. So if you haven't seen them, please pause this video and go check them out. So now that we know about the TypeScript SDK and how to bring your smart contracts over from the playground, let's look at deploying and interacting with your contract. I've got this simple demo contract that we created in a previous demo. And now we need to deploy and interact with it on the blockchain. So let's go over into our app file and I'll take out all of this so I can show you exactly step-by-step step. we'll walk through it. So let's take all this out and then talk about what we need to do. So inside of this handle simple demo, which is just triggered at the UI, we need to connect to the runtime instance. We need to get inputs from the user. We need to build the smart contract and deploy, wait for confirmation of that transaction. And then we need to build and submit a deposit. Remember this contract is just gonna take a deposit from user A and transfer it over to user B. Uh, the final thing we wanna do is verify the deposit. So we need to walk through each one of these things and, and show exactly how we're going to do this. So the first thing we may want to do is look at the parameters here. And these are coming directly from the UI. So when I say get inputs from the user, that's handled with React uh, and the UI. So we're going to take those and pass them into this function. Uh, first is the number or the amount that we want to deposit. And then the to address or the Bob address that we want to send to. OK, so let's first uh, do a little housekeeping here. So we'll say console.log. We'll say the amount you entered is, and then just pass that back to the user and say amount. And now we want to convert this to loveless. We want the user to be able to put in ADA, but our contract deals in loveless. So we need to convert the ADA to loveless. So we'll say const amount loveless uh, is, and this is a simple conversion, it's just amount times and then uh, 1 million. So this should return us a loveless amount that we can use. So then we can say something like console.log, we converted that to amount loveless and then say loveless. Okay, now we need to connect to a runtime instance. So who's actually gonna be making this interaction? So the user that is um, depositing the tokens will say that they're actually gonna deploy the contract. So to do that, we need to first figure out which wallet they're using. So inside of my React application, um, I have this state variable, and I'm going to use this state variable as the wallet choice for the user. So we'll say const supported wallet equals wallet choice as a supported wallet name. And supported wallet name comes from the TypeScript SDK. Wallet choice is just a, a state variable that I've defined elsewhere in my React application. So now we need to wrap this into a browser wallet. So we'll say const b wallet equals await the wallet package dot make browser wallet and then pass it in the supported wallet. Okay, so now we have a browser wallet with the address. And what we need to do is actually get the address from that browser wallet. So we're going to allow the Bob address or the two address to be input, but the address from the user that's connected to our DAP, we just want to get that address from the user. So to get that address from the user, we'll say const alice address 32 equals await the browser wallet dot get change address. Okay, and then what we're gonna need to do is take that uh, and convert it into a string. So we'll just say const alice address equals uh, un address 32, and then pass in that alice address 32. Now, this is a temporary solution. Remember the TypeScript SDK is in beta, so some of these things are changing. And one of the things that is changing is, is that this will no longer be necessary in the future. It'll be wrapped into this get change address. 
OK, so now we have uh, Alice's address that we got from the connection with the DAP, and we have Bob's address that we got from uh, the UI. So let's take Alice's address and create a party out of that. So we'll say const Alice is a party, and it is this address, Alice address, OK? And then we need to do the same thing for Bob. So we need to say Bob is a party, and Bob's address well, we just got that from the UI and it's right here as Bob address ref. So we'll call that Bob address ref. And now we've got the two parties that we need. So now to actually connect to the runtime instance, hopefully you've seen this in other demos, but what we're gonna do is create a runtime lifecycle object. So we'll say const runtime lifecycle equals await make runtime lifecycle. And this is going to take in two parameters. We can see here at the pop-up, it's going to take in the runtime URL and a wallet name. So let's first say wallet name. And we know that that is supported wallet. So we're saying that uh, Alice is connecting to this runtime instance. And then the runtime URL, I've specified this string elsewhere in my React application, which is why I can just pass in this constant. Uh, you may need your own runtime instance or you can use one of the public IOG instances. But now we are actually connected to the runtime, okay? We've gotten our inputs from the user uh, and we've got those inside of our parameters here. So we know that that's taken care of. So we've got our inputs, we've connected to the runtime instance, and now we want to build the smart contract and deploy. So let me clean up my lines a little bit here. So we'll go down to build the smart contract and deploy. And how do we actually do this? So we need to call that smart contract function that we created. So over here uh, in simple demo contract, I have this um, simple demo contract and we're gonna call this function right here, make simple demo where it's gonna return us that contract. So I'll go back to my app file and I can just say my contract equals make simple demo and then pass in the three parameters that we need. So that is amount loveless, that is Alice and that is Bob. So this will return a contract type with all of those parameters and everything set for us to be able to deploy. So now that we've created and built our smart contract, we need to deploy that. So let's deploy the contract and initiate a signing. So we can say const, and I know this is gonna return an array, but first let me just work through this. So we'll say await runtime lifecycle, and this is the object we specified, dot contracts dot create contract. Okay, and this, the most important field that this is gonna take for you is contract. And then you just pass it in my contract, okay? So now, what are the types that this returns? I said it returns an array and I didn't say anything about what it returns. It returns two pieces inside of this array. The first piece is going to be contract ID and the second piece is transaction ID where the transaction ID is just a string, right? So we know, that once this deploys, we actually need to wait for this to confirm. So why don't we right underneath of that, just force the contract to wait. So I have a little note for this. So let's do it right underneath my note here. So we'll say uh, const contract confirm equals await the B wallet that wait confirmation for that transaction ID. So you see what we did there? Creating the contract returns the contract ID and also the transaction string, the hash for the transaction string. So then we're gonna take that same transaction ID and pass it into wait confirmation so that now our JavaScript will wait for that transaction to finalize before moving forward with the next steps. And what are those next steps? So the next step is to build and submit a deposit. So how do we go about that? So we know that we need to formulate this deposit with certain types as defined by the TypeScript SDK. So we can say that this will look like const deposit is an I deposit, okay? And this is again, that special type defined by the TypeScript SDK. And I can tell you what this is going to take in. It's gonna take in input from party, and that is Alice. It's going to take that deposits. What are they depositing? They're depositing the amount Loveless. And then of what token that is of Loveless? And then into account. 
and that account is going to be Bob. Now, I left this error here on purpose to show you um, the beauty of using TypeScript and the TypeScript SDK. So it's saying the type number is not assignable to type big in. And that expected type comes from iDeposit. So when you're using TypeScript, the TypeScript SDK will let you know where you formatted things incorrectly. So now that I know that amount loveless needs to be a big int, let's do that. We've done that elsewhere. So we can just say const big int amount equals the big int constructor amount loveless. Okay, so now it's going to take that big that amount loveless and convert it to a big int. So now all we need to say is big int amount. Okay, so now we've formulated this I deposit, but now we need to prepare it as an input. So how do we do that? We need to say, and let me scroll down a little bit here so you can see better. We'll say const inputs is an input type. And what is that input? It is what we just defined as our deposit. Okay, and if you've done anything incorrectly here, the TypeScript SDK will also let you know that. So now that we've got our input, let's set up our deposit request. So we can say const deposit request is an apply inputs request, also defined by TypeScript SDK, and then pass in our inputs. And that's what we need to do to set up this deposit request. But now we actually need to submit that into our contract. So how do we do that? Now we need to use our runtime lifecycle object again. So let's say const the transaction ID, because this, this call is going to return the transaction ID for submitting our deposit. So we'll say const transaction ID equals await runtime lifecycle dot contracts dot apply inputs. So now apply inputs takes in two parameters. We can see here that contract ID is one of those and then apply inputs request is the other. So the contract ID we already know. We just have to scroll back up here and see what we called it. We did in fact call it contract ID. So now let's just put that in here. So for this specific contract, I want you to make this specific deposit request. Okay, great. So now we've submitted it. And what we need to do is wait for confirmation of that deposit. So let's say const deposit confirm. And actually let's do this underneath here in, in uh, the notes section so we can keep this clean. We'll say const deposit, oops, make sure I spell that correctly. Deposit confirm equals await that browser wallet dot wait confirmation, the same one we used before, but this time we'll pass it in this transaction ID. So now the JavaScript will wait for that to confirm. And then we can just say console.log. We can say transaction confirmed, and then whatever is in that Boolean value. So this call here is going to return a Boolean value. So we'll be able to see true or false that it did deposit or fail. So we'll say deposit confirm. And then we can also say uh, new line, here is your receipt. And then for the receipt, you're just going to use the transaction ID. And now you can take this transaction ID and send it up to Cardano scan so you can check and see where that uh, transaction ID is and what is the status of that and everything involved. So now I've got everything set. Okay, all I need to do is open up my application, clear all this out, say NPM start, and it should bring up localhost 3000 so that I can start interacting with this contract. What I'm gonna do is just bring it over into the browser uh, so let me close this one, bring it over into this browser where I know I have my uh, wallets installed. So I'll say localhost 3000, and it should open up my React application. Now we'll connect our wallet, and I'm going to connect my NAMI wallet. So this is where that wallet choice string comes in. And then we'll just select simple demo contract. And let me open up the console so that we can see more here. So we see that we check for the browser wallet extensions. And that's where those buttons popped up, right? So now the wallet choice is set as NAMI. Let's select simple demo contract. We can put in that 10 uh, amount in ADA. And remember, we made the conversion to Loveless ourselves. And now let's look at what address to send it to. So let me grab my Lace wallet. We'll grab the address from my Lace wallet. We'll say receive, copy, then just paste that in here. And then submit. 
So here we go. The amount you entered is 10. We converted that to uh, this many Loveless. And now here's the wallet UI asking to confirm this transaction. And this is the transaction that is deploying your smart contract. Okay, so let me make sure I put in my password correctly here. So the deposit is next, right? But we need to first wait for the confirmation of our transaction, uh, the one that's creating the contract and submitting it to the blockchain. So that's the step we're in now. We're waiting for the confirmation of that transaction. And then we should get uh, another pop-up here at the Wallet UI. It says, this app requests a signature. Okay, so let's sign that. And here's our deposit going into the smart contract. We'll select confirm. And now we should get, uh, after another uh, wait for confirmation here, we should get uh, proof that, that those tokens were deposited into our Lace wallet. And we can check that in two different places. We can either check that at the Wallet UI or we can take the transaction ID and input that to Cardano scan and let it tell us what is the status of that transaction. Okay, here's the output from our application where it says transaction confirmed is true. Here is your receipt. So first let's bring open our Lace wallet. And this is a simple way to check. We can just look at um, the history. So we'll go to transactions here and we see received 10 test ADA. And that's it. That's how we bit, we deploy our smart contract to the blockchain and then we start to build deposits and interact with that smart contract after it's been deployed. That's it for this demo. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.